Let's begin with Ghana's economy that has been on a downward trajectory for some time now. The country's uh, deal with the IMF is expected to help bring fiscal discipline to our financial system and also get the economy to be better. But are we seeing signs of the economy getting better? Well, government says we are on a path of recovery. But former finance minister Setek doesn't think so. Why? He has joined me in the studio for a conversation. Great to have you. Yeah, good morning. And good morning to you. Good you morning to friends. you. Yeah. And, and uh, of course, we're going to be talking about our economy. But let me first pick your thoughts. You heard me read that headline. And you saw videos of how the free SHS is having problems with meals being served to uh, our kids in the school. I mean, I'm asking you this because right from the onset, you, uh, you raised issues of the feasibility or sustainability of this program. Does this come to you as a surprise? Um, not at all, um, because immediately the unfettered, you know, free, because we had progressively fee free. So let me be clear about that. But immediately the unfettered free SHS was, was announced, you know, yeah, I took the clear position that it was not fiscally sustainable. Um, and uh, that is knowing the numbers. You know, um, uh, education was already taken, you know, the largest of the budgets. Uh, we had arrears and others uh, which we were then battling to settle. Uh, in addition to, you know, the Dumso, Dead, Silver Spine and others. But even if you took those out, I didn't see how we could bring, you know, all the money that was coming from parents to complement secondary education. Uh, how we could substitute that with money from the budgets without borrowing, which was going to be heavy and excessive. And so, uh, well, I continued tracking, and I, every year, you know, I made sure, like I do with other indices, you know, I brought out, you know, examples. So for me, the alarm bells was in 2018 or so when we did a bond, either 2018 or 2019. And with most of the, I believe it's 2019, when most of the buffers we had left had started to dry out, there was a debate whether we shouldn't use the heritage fund, you know, to support free SHS. And I pretend that we were you know, inv investing in future, you know, uh, generations, and that's the purpose of the Heritage Fund. Of mm. course, some of us opposed it, that wasn't the purpose of the Heritage Fund. Uh, and God, it was never. But then we went to the bond market, and in the report to Parliament, we were using 2.2 billion Ghana cities to support free SHS. This was in the bond report. Okay. Um, so the question then is, Unless you got revenues, extra revenues going forward, how are you going to be going to the market every year to get 2.2 billion, you know, and likely to increase if you want to provide quality food and the rest to support free SHS? Mm -hmm. So as I continued every year to use the indices to show that it was, you know, unsustainable. Initially, it sounded like sour grapes, but I thought, you know, I would you know, given the position I occupied and what I do, you know, I better just, you know, continue to express my views. So it's just like, you know, uh, bearing bailout costs and uh, um, energy sector costs and things into in footnotes and the rest. So I, I haven't changed my mind, you know, on free SHS. Is it going to get yeah. worse if we continue like this? It has gotten worse and it will get worse because remember, we are locked out of our own domestic, you know, medium term, that is three year bond, four year bond market. You know, we've defaulted, we've taken people's savings, we've done haircuts and whatever. You know, so if revenue was not enough to be sustaining free SHS and what was sustaining it was borrowing, you know, you are no longer able to borrow domestically, neither are you able to borrow from the external bond market, then where are you going to get the money to support, mm. Mm. you know, the, the free SHS? Th this, this and without, sorry, without arrears, mm -hmm. you know, for, from 
go feed into all those. It's clearly not sustainable. Mm. Uh, then it brings us to the economy generally. Uh, I mean, government says that uh, it's getting better. If you listen to the president, Eko Fado, in his last uh, State of the Nations address to Parliament, he said, we are on a good path. But you say that's not the case. Why so? I think that's too quick. Um, let's look at where the government took us, right? First government to default. You know, we missed default because of HIPAA, debt forgiveness. You know, so we could have learned something from it, uh, which is why we had things like sinking fund and the rest and say, let's pay, let's be paying part of our debt. Nobody says you should pay 100%. But for it to be sustainable, you need to be paying something. It was stopped. You know, um, so we defaulted uh, the highest, at the highest, you know, debt to GDP ratio. Inflation, we use Bank of Ghana to finance the budget. You know, again, you can see where the money, you know, some of the money was going because they were printing money virtually. I mean, uh, even if not, you know, realistically to support the budget, that wasn't sustainable. You know, we saw where it landed us, you know, reduce both domestic and external reserves, you know, for the central bank. Inflation, you know, very high. We nearly missed, uh, first time in 40, nearly 40 years, I believe. Yeah, 40 years, 2023. Mm. If you take ERP SAP to be 1983, when ERP SAP, 40 years, we almost went into recession. You know, that's a 40 year record. So I think that before we start talking about we doing well and all that, for a government that held, you know, its predecessor to performance indicators, let's put the indicators in the background. But the reason I say that we should probably make haste slowly is that the criteria for success, and I said this morning in a, at that show, the criteria for measuring performance or success is narrow. We are talking about if you take debt, we know. Okay, so let me use the, uh, the two indicators that are the most popular your budget deficit and your debt, you know, ratio. As I said, we defaulted. So if we are doing well, okay, what shows? If you come to the deficit, the general definition of a deficit is. Revenue minus total expenditure. And then you get your deficit. So salary minus, you know, expenses, household expenses. The difference is your deficit, for which you go and get, you know, overdraft, you go and get some temporary loan. Or if your expenditure includes heavy items, like uh, if you're in a position like um, a house, furniture, car, the mortgage, you know, adds to it, right? So, obviously, you are going to pay over a period of time. So, when we take interest, interest from that total expenditure, right? Then, let me use simple numbers. If your income was hundred and your expenditure was one twenty, you have a deficit because expenditure is higher of twenty. Um, 120 minus, you know, 100 is 20. If you take your borrowing cost, interest only, not even the repayment, which is five from it, your expenditure becomes 115. And your deficit narrows, right, from 20 to, to 15. But it doesn't take the interest away, right? Moreover, this is cash in, cash out. But to calculate your real deficit for the household, if you had gone to borrow previously, or if you had even gone, you know, to the market, you know, and so things are tough, you know, for the household today. So can you give us some cassava? Can you give us a few, you know, work? I'll come out and pay. Maybe you are trusted. So even we practice credit, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? So if you don't add what you are owing, you already taken interest for the past loans that you took. And then you are also excluding, you know, the things you bought on credit, right? 
which deepens the deficit. That also is out. Mm. Okay, that's the deficit side. I'm saying that if we continue to use that measure, we takes out interest payment and takes out, you know, the um, <clears throat> the interest payment and the arrears. And you know that we are sitting on a lot of arrears. So you are suggesting that there the, the, the some responsibilities that government is deferring, and just to make the numbers look good. Well, to be frank, it is a measure that is used, but it is used mainly by middle-income and advanced countries who have very good systems, you know, and have their debt, interest, and other things under control. Okay. Because then growth, when you grow, right, then you know that as I grow, I can meet all these things. And so you can use a primary balance. But what's our record? You know, we grew with three oil fields. We grew with the expansion of services sector. We grew with the injection of nearly 10 billion US dollars into the economy. If you had COVID loan, you know, the IMF program, which this government took over, you know, the three additional three oil fields, you know, and all that, right? If the primary balance was going to prove right based on growth, Ghana wouldn't be where it is today. Mm. You know, so I'm saying that given the record and the fact that we had previously had a bailout cost, energy cost in footnotes, we should be careful when we are using such criteria because they didn't tell the whole picture and we'll be monitoring it. And in fact, the fund shows both. Even though the fund assesses us on primary balance, it shows the fiscal balance, which mm. includes all of this. So, so what you're saying is that it's, uh, by the time that we are ready to come out of the IMF deal, is that when these bills will mature? Is that what you're Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. I mean, you even bring another dimension, which I mentioned earlier. Because remember, you are looking good today, you are taking interest out. Yeah, you are looking good today on the debt side because the debt has been deferred, right? From 2026, they are going to kick in. So whoever takes over from 2025, 2020, late 2025, 2026, and we have not even done the external you know, restructuring involving the bonds because some of the bonds, like the bullet bonds and the rest, are also going to fall due. So the fact that, one, you've done a haircut, which you call savings. It's no savings. You've taken people's money, you know, with their savings, uh, mm. which or which they are expecting interest and in in sustaining, growing their principal. You've taken that, you know, you've had your debts, you know, deferred. You are asking for the remaining debts to be either deferred or even cancelled, right? Yes, it's going to catch up with us, as we are saying. So if you are not making provision for that next government, you know, with, with all these reliefs you are getting, you know, to pay down part of the debt, okay? And it's a good thing that the first coupon has been paid. Otherwise, it would have added. What you are saying, it would have added to the... Mm. Then you're only deferring and kicking the can, you know, for the next administration. So, so what, 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 you think government is doing this on purpose? Um, no, well, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far because that would be, you know, but given the experience that, that we have had where some you know, numbers were put in footnotes where previous governments had put them, you know, and then all of a sudden, despite our Public Financial Management Act, our own law, you know, uh, which was passed in 2016, and the Fiscal Responsibility Act that was passed in 2017, saying that when we calculate our deficit, it should include interest payment, include arrears, right? But the same government that passed those laws when it said it could perform better than other governments, right? Why should we, in my, in my assessment, you are deferring those things to, to other governments, and therefore the picture you are painting now may not be complete mm. by the criteria you held other you know, governments. Remember there was a time, you know, it said that we had the best performances in Kuma, right? So, yes, that's so. Mine is just a caution. That w would you have done things differently given the situation we are in now? Well, we did things differently. We did things differently because, as I said, we passed the Public Financial Management Act. Today, there's something called payables, you know, which is uh, part of the structural conditionalities, uh, which we were calling the contract database. It means that we want to know our liabilities, mm. right? The government stopped it. It's not a new initiative. It was started in 2010 when I was a deputy. 
You know, I was put in charge of that. So what we did was to do a census of all contracts that were awarded. If minister, the Minister for Rules brings a, a, a certificate for payment and he doesn't give us all the details, we detained it, I called them, and they provided all the information. So we had a best eye view of you know, the contrast sum that I raised, and I know the figures. It was about 13 billion when we left office. With the report that was published because of the IMF program, it's risen to 77 billion, all right? So yes, we took inventory. Why was that not put in the gift list for the past seven years? And now it has become a conditionality. That's one difference. Second difference is by 2014, and let me use practical, 2014, we had issued some bonds to pay for the Dumso, you know, arrears, subsidy and arrears. We issued bonds to pay for the single spine. And they were three year, five year bonds. So if you did them in 2010, 2011, it means that by, for the three years, by 2013, 2014, yeah, and in succession, because you did them annually. And then for the, uh, even the five year, 2010 by 2015, 2016, these were fully due because we were paying all the interest, okay? Whereas the, the, the uh, sovereign bond that we did in 2007, we were paying all the interest. So, and it was 2007, remember? Mm -hmm. So we saw three years ahead of us that all these bonds were going to mature from 2017 going. Mm -hmm. Some had started maturing. That's how can we did a sinking fund. So that's another example. Mm -hmm. To use our own oil revenue, part of which is new to the budget, to be paying down the debt. In fact, the current administration used 200 million of that money, you know, to pay down, you know, the final installments of the first sovereign bond under the Sessionsiku for. What did they do? They stopped it. They never, you know. So there are things that we did. For example, we also said that if we are doing a project, what we call the self-financing, if we are doing a project in a sector where the project is going to generate its own resources, especially if it's forex, like airport tax and the rest. Let's ring fence that money instead of allowing the entity, because it's a tax. And that's what we did, used to do Terminal 3. It is the pressure on the central government to rely on taxpayers to finance every, whether commercial or non-commercial, you know, uh, take loans for commercial or non-commercial, uh, projects. Mm. Those that can pay for themselves have to pay for themselves. Okay. So actually what I'm saying is that we did things. You know, the initiative of excellency, you know, President Mahama and he's promising that we'll continue and probably do more. Mm. L looking at how things are right now, uh, how do you intend to turn the economy around in the event that you're given that uh, power uh, in December? Uh, the first step is to know what's going on. Right? And the second is to see whether what is going to happen, right? Should Ghanaians hand you hand over power to you in 2025? We should know the state of the economy. You may not know it. 100%. Are you envisaging some difficulty when power is there? Will be, over, there will be difficulty. Looking at things, the way things have gone. Actually, there will be difficulty because, as I said, the debt is being deferred into 2025 and 2020, at least most of you from 2026. So one year into your administration, the debt which is being deferred, which you are not paying now, you are going to be paying. And it's good to have a clear understanding that this is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And by using the primary balance, it means that there is no, no effort on the part of the current administration, despite the flows, to start making provision to pay down some of those debts. Of course, I must consider the ones that are in firm agreements, like the coupon that was just paid for the domestic, obviously because of the you know how it came about, the demonstrations and the rest. You know, the first coupon has been paid, but you know there's a lot of the interest and the rest. So it's by trying to understand what's going on and not taking things on face value, you know, so that we can, you know, advise our candidates about the problem that is going to arise. As I said, you know, from that publication, which was not done from 2013 until 2022, why? At least it tells us that we know the contract sum in the system. Of course, this is 2022. And we also know that about 32 billion or so of those arrears have been bundled together and added to debt. It doesn't take it away. So you need to know many of these things. You need to read, you know, the fund program, 
their outcome, the things they are saying, because they have reservations. They are saying, well, yeah, we're doing well. But in some places, you know, they have their reservations. They point to things which are not so good. An example, the delayed tax, uh, domestic tax system that should strengthen. Do you have a plan to deal with this situation if power is given to We you? had a plan. So we are going to even refine it and add new ones. Mm. We had a plan. We had plans like what I've mentioned. You know, but repayment. things didn't continue the way from the way you're saying. Didn't continue. Your plan didn't continue. That yeah. means you're going to start from square, uh, zero. No, ground zero. Uh, not in all cases because what we know is that the gift base is there. Only sometimes it's it's been instead of passing all expenditure through it, some of them were not passed through the you know. But some would have to. For example, we did ICOMS, which is the uh, customs you know system. Right, it used to be called a single window. You remember West Blue, and you know, that's what I comes yeah. today, right? Uh, that's the customs part of the GRA tax system. Why, for seven years, has a domestic one not been done? That is going to be new because in the fund program, the government asked for a deferral. You know, something for which a tender was prepared and issued and finalized about a year and a year and a half ago. Mm. Right, despite the long delay. So yes, Aisha, we 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 know certain things that we were doing that uh, contract data based payables, which I told you. These were initiatives, and they were stopped. For those ones, we will see the condition in which the database is, the condition in which the IT systems and things are, you know, and then you know put them on board. For those that were to be implemented, like gift list phase two to take care of the accounts payable and the rest. Those are conditionalities. So some may be continued because they are conditionalities. You know, but it's our program. Mm. You know, it's not a fund that force. We also in a program. But those were programs which we were doing under the homegrown policy. All right. As I am confident that, you know, I'm not saying it to be easy. <laughs> <laughs> right, so wish you all the best. And uh, that's the former, uh, Thank Finance you very much. Minister Seth Tepe, who says that uh, there's a lot uh, wrong with our economy. And he says that when the NDC takes over power, uh, if they win power in 2024, there will be a lot of uh, difficulties to deal with. But he says they have a plan to deal with that. I'm grateful that you came. Let's get.